Come with me if you want to live. Hi, it's Chris, and welcome to Something Else Amiga. A box showed up with eBay tape that usually means where it came from and probably where it's going. Ubuntu 2404, Noble Numbnut, Noble Numbat has come out. I'm going to blow up my machine and click Upgrade. So we're going to open this pickle. That's a knife. Always cut away from yourself. Where'd you get that kick butt knife, Chris? This small letter opener was purchased on Home Shopping Network. Uh, 1992, I think, or something like that. Uh, late night after a chicken wing attack and working late. They had a special on Frost Cutlery. It's a company that does some wild handles and things. Yeah, 99 bucks, you got a sword. So I said, okay. Anyway, I still use it to this day. Inside the box we have some bubble wrap and we have a floating board. No note. And something's loose. Something's banging around in here. Oops. Yeah. Probably the ram. Oh god. So this is a Amiga 4000 Rev 2, and it's got some Toshiba 74 2000 ROMs in it with no covers. Four megs of RAM in slot B that all fell out. She's dirty, she's crusty, she doesn't have battery damage, or a little bit. And it needs a recap. Um, Lisa's been soldered on. So somebody went a little crazy and retinned Lisa and bent her legs like Heather Locklear on the Fall Guy. Has a Super Buster 11 in a socket. That's good. You can still see some schmutz underneath the SIM socket there. And the posts are still in. But U177, you can see that. Can you see the coloration of the acids? Yeah, so we're going to take care of that. Clean that up there. A little alcohol clear those holes out. Moving on up the line of 976, 975, looking good. On to the expensive girl here. My name is Alice. Looking nice. And a video deck. And of course your two pain in the butt unbuffered chips that blow. The odd and even CIA U300 and U350. Power connector. Black as my mother's heart. Regular old fat Gary. And a Ramsey 7. Ew, it pooped on me. What the heck is that? Okay, so fresh alcohol, the poop off of my hand from the board somewhere. I'm just gonna give this thing a little poop wipe itself. Now you're gonna look right here. You're gonna see she's a little crusty. I don't know why. Why can't you guys wipe your stuff down? You just leave, you just leave it dirty. Just figure the heck with it. Chris will clean it. So there we go. You can see the blackness of her heart. And we don't even know if she works, but I just checked some messages and she's in for a recap. Lorena style. One of these is chip RAM. It's probably this one because it's double sided. And the rest of these, I have no idea because it just, they were in the bag loosely. In the meantime, we're going to get the Hertel LED here. Now this is just going for a two mega chip. Oh, you know why it's not going to freaking work? Why won't this work, Chris? Why will this not work? You need a CPU. It's jumpered external external for 040, but we're gonna jump it internal internal so I can use this 3630. Mm-hmm. Low and no. No lights. Jesus Lord. I don't know which one this is. Let's get this out of here. This one says good. Internal internal. Argument upstairs. This is a 040. So I don't remember if it works or not. It says dead, so I don't think it works. Let's plug it in anyway and see what it does. Low and green. Yeah.
That's the V sync. This girl was dead before. This CPU is toast. I mean, power save mode. So, yeah, this one's dead. I made a deal with Mr. Uh, Andrews there. I was going to send him two. He's going to do some magic and flip boards around because I can't see. And he's got replacement boards. Put all these goodies on the replacement board to fix the C102B uh, capacitor death. And uh, I said, you fix, I'll send you two, you send me one working. And you can keep the other one and sell it. So that's what I'm going to do. Hi. It's the next day. It's uh, 1.30 in the afternoon. I smith things in for a recap. Lorraine of them off like I always do. And... The way I do caps may not be the way you do caps or the quote preferred method of hot tweezers or hot air or whatever. I show this every once in a while, but I haven't done it in a while. When I say I'm going to Lorena a cap off, it's a three step process. And I'm going to zoom in and we're going to go over that together. Remember, I play a doctor on TV. And I have years of experience in doing this. If you follow these instructions, you will have a similar success rate. So I have a pair of snips. I call them Lorena. Lorena Bobbitt. Cut this cap off in a single pass. I press my finger on it and I snip it in half. Ooh hoo hoo. You're left with a ring. A ring of aluminum around the cap, a rubber gasket, and two nipples. I do a relief cut. Sorry I'm left-handed so I'm in the way. I snip the cap on its side, right? Snip. And I then peel this ring off. Bend it. Do what you gotta do to peel this ring off. Okay? The ring is off. You're left with a piece of rubber for a gasket. Sometimes they're plastic. You can pick this rubber gasket off. I'm trying to do this so the camera can see. So there's the rubber gasket, oh my god, and you're left with two teats, I call them, and if you were to attempt to just pick up this plastic, the fatness from you cutting that cap will prevent that. So go in again and cut these little teats off. Once they're done, this little piece of plastic will just come right off. And you're left with the legs of the capacitor, or what's left of them. Now I put a little bit of hot sauce on here. It's Kester 186 No Clean. And then I simply remove the legs. Ta-da! And when you're done with that, with the flux still on there, you can take yourself some braid and just go over the pad. and you're left with a clean pad. A little bit of alcohol and a cotton swab. Carefully wipe it and you'll see you're left with the dookie that was in the cap. The isopropyl alcohol will neutralize any electrolytics in the area and you are left with a super clean pad. If you follow those instructions of the three-step process and take your time, you won't lose any legs, you won't lose any pads, and it does help on the severely corroded, mainly the audio section up here, which is gross. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom into this area here near the audio and composite, or the RGB. Now you can see here, this area is excessively crusty. Oh my no! God! This is your op amp, LF347, or equivalent, that uh, controls the audio. And you can see she's really crusty. There's also some electrolytic damage on the ceramic capacitors. These have leaked, okay? That's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. And they cause all of their juice to flow around here and eventually acidically turn into goop that eats up these boards and the traces. There's something really hard right here. I don't know what that is, and it's not scraping off, so we'll have to wet that down. 
I'm not going to bore you with this, but I'm going to remove these and we'll uh, continue. Now, there are a couple of through holes on this endeavor. And we're going to get this through hole out here. And usually how I do it is you can heat the area, right? Or I like to just snip it down. I snip the legs down of the through hole. Why would you do that? Because the through hole capacitors, when they're put in, they're usually spread or bent. And if you pull a bent piece of metal through a straight hole, you could damage it, scratch it, rip the via itself. So if you cut them straight and then you just heat them up and wiggle them out, you'll have much better luck. Heat up the area with your soldering iron and it will come right out. You might have to wiggle back and forth a couple times just for safety's sake. And there you go. This is why we recap machines, everyone. Contrary to a certain Retro Dinko's belief that we don't need to, you can clearly see electrolytics have leaked all onto the op amp and the ceramics, and if left unchecked while the machine was functional, it will cause significant damage and break micro traces, vias, vias, and all sorts of components. That's why we recap. Let me clean this up and I'll show you a comparison of a cleaned system. So here's the before and here's the after. Much better, huh? Look at the op amp. Nice and clean, everything's shiny. No pads lost. A little bit of dampness on this area right here because of the alcohol. There you go. That's all dried. And I even got the little dookie booger off with a ferrite bead. That's why we recap. This, once new capacitors are put on, will last another 30 plus years. This, this is art. Okay, so you can tell by the big pile of trash on my desk. Everything came out clean. All pads are clear and clean. I haven't totally scrubbed the board yet, but no traces lost. No yuck. This is actually a very good specimen of a more minus the little negative pad that had a little bit of issues and a couple crusties in the audio area where we cleaned it all up. Uh, it took me about, I don't know, 45 minutes taking my time. And just like that, 21 new capacitors. And I have a little bit of flux to clean up and then we're good to go. So we're going to clean up this mess and the trash and wipe everything down. Make sure we don't have any metal bits anywhere. We'll go for a final test. Full ATK spectrum of analysis and science and math. Alright, we're getting geared up here. I got uh, the RAM. So we're going to do just chip RAM first and then we'll put in this assortment of others. Using my O30, it is jumper for internal, internal. And I'm going to move DF0 to external so this go check will boot significantly faster and I don't have to wait for all the hard drive stuff. This is just the base 030 25 megahertz. Let's see what happens. Low, high. And it should, there's the whatever. Sometimes they still take a minute because they're looking for a daggone hard drive. And then uh, we'll see if it boots to, oops. Let me get test kit in the GoTech there. All right, so uh, machine works. Let's do all the volume tests. We're gonna hook up the audio. Make sure that op amp sounds nice. We'll stick it right here for now. On the Devoom TV. Get these for like less than 30 bucks on eBay now. I'm gonna unplug its power so it doesn't hum. Okay, let's do audio first. Penny. 
Left channel is kind of eh, because that connector is really jacked up. Oh, let's do the video. Beautiful. Gradient and checkerboard, which this will not show alternating because the monitor corrects the flicker. Memory, 2 megs of fast. Alright, that's fine. Uh, floppy drive controller ports left, right. Yep. We'll test out M. Miss Pac Man in a little while. CIAs, FCF80033, normal. 60 hertz, NTSC, all tests passed. RTC is ticking, but of course with no battery. It won't hold. But there we go. We are so we are so we also are gonna turn this off. We'll put some fast RAM in it and we're gonna hook up the uh, the ports in the back. All this RAM by the way, the clips are busted off. So it was like that when it got here. All the RAM was off of the board, so you kind of just got a hope and a prayer. These were provided to me from Mr. Jonathan for by PCB Way for the uh, testing kit. So we have the serial port and the parallel port dongle. Serial port is on the top, and parallel port is underneath. And then we'll hit the button. We have lights. We'll also test them too with the Mega Test Kit. To make sure everything's good. My glasses are so foggy. I gotta clean them up. So with these little lights here, they'll they mean that it's working. The one underneath of it for parallel is also working. Here we go. Serial test. Green is good. Probing. Red is bad. So green is good. Let's do the next one. Here's the parallel. Green is good. Do we have RAM? We have 16 megs of RAM and 2 megs of fast. Another Amiga has been saved. Ooh, son of a bitch. I didn't like the way that audio sounded at all, so I am going to do an op amp on it. And you can see corrosion and gross. Yeah, and I don't even think that was making contact very well. Some yuck underneath, not too bad. Remember, I did flush it, but where's the leg right there? Yeah, it's... There is your cleaned area right here. I'm going to check that second pin in for continuity because there is a micro trace right here. That goes to a little dot you can barely see right there. I need to check that for beep beep just to make sure it's got it. Good. There we go. Now, like I say, I'm not Picasso. But, I think you'll agree, this looks a lot better. There you go. One new op amp, LF347. This RCA jack on the white is way smaller than the other one. So somebody's been in here. Oh my god, it's green is freaking it's horribly green. So that's that's great. Which means the center bar is non-existent. Yeah, there is no center bar in there's there's nothing it's missing the bar. It needs an audio connector. This one's definitely been put in because its legs are super long. There's no metal in here. <laughs> you need new audio jacks that I don't have. The right kind of has one. Kind of, but not like... These are not the audio jacks that came with this. When you plug in an RCA jack, this piece touches a piece of metal like this, boop, and it pushes it up, and that's how you get this. And this is the ground, this is your signal. This doesn't exist. The metal in there, it doesn't exist. So, I mean, it exists, but it's just, it's the wrong size, or it's gone. So, that's a issue. Uh, I'm going to run 
just one audio channel on the one that works. I don't have any RCA jacks of the Amiga size. Chip keeps going flip and it freaks ATK out because it loses its ability. Yeah, it doesn't have insides, which is why it sounds like crap. It's like not, it's like barely touching. I can't bend it to get it to touch. It's there, but it's not. I don't like his chip ram socket at all. I gotta put a chip ram socket in. So that means I have to add solder to 72 pins. Come out, there we go. All right, so one socket. All the holes look good. This, this station really does a great job at uh, total removal. One SIM socket. There we go. Memory, two makes detected. Okay, great. Audio. And that, it's, it's these damn RCAs. I don't have them. Sorry. So, at least you got a fresh op amp. You did tell me it was just a recap, but you got a socket and an op amp out of it too. So, with that, this is working and done. At least that socket. The other sockets have their, their grippy tongs, so that's fine. Um, the chip ram was totally wasted and it kept falling out. Now this is solid. And we're back in action, so that is all I got for this one. It will need some RCA jacks in the future, but I'm sure the owner can do that one when they get them. They're like 18 to 26 dollars shipped over here in America, where Jesus lives. So that's all I got. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey. If you would like to help me continue to do this, please consider joining my patron. It's only a dollar a month to start, and if you're rich, you can do more, and it's greatly appreciated. It helps me keep the costs down when I gotta buy all these chips and parts and the, the machines and the time and the power supplies. So 285 Amigas have been saved with your help. Yes, you dude, on the couch, in your underwear. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey. Until next time, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.